Seems like the consequences of my occupation have finally caught up with me. I went to the crippled Burrick pub to meet Sammy about unloading some merchandise. The smell of ale and smoke from the place wasn't enough to cover up the stench of an ambush. A couple of watch officers were there waiting for me. Judging by the look on Sammy's face, I'd say he sold me out. That goddamn rat selling me out to- Oh, God! Behold. The expression. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? They didn't seem interested in bringing me in either. The bluecoats were looking for swift justice. Fortunately, I always have an ace up my sleeve. I did break into the police station, although they shouldn't know that since I was uncharacteristically careful. No knockouts, no sightings, nobody died. Honestly, in retrospect, the whole police station thing seems like a waste of time since Sheriff Truitt is on my ass anyway. Better get moving before they see me. All right, we'll do this your way. Escape the ambush and return to your home in the Northwest. Don't kill anyone. If you guys wanted a peek of the sprawling city before we got to Deadly Shadows where they tried it out, here you go. I'm still not sure exactly how they were able to get away with making maps this big, but I'll give you a hint. Lies. I feel like maybe, since it's on my way, I'll do some light grave robbing. But no, the game doesn't let you get to the cemetery on the map, so we're doing a mostly straightforward mission where I only get to rob a couple of secondary locations. It's you against the city's police, again, or as the French call them, the Jambon. Garrett keeps a map of the city, which is laid out like... You know what? I'm just gonna follow my compass and check which section is highlighted. Obviously through the marketplace first. What's a big fella like you doing out here at night? <laughs> Don't you want a woman to keep you warm? What for? This uniform is plenty warm enough, and it's not even cold out tonight. Oh, thank God Benny isn't reproducing anytime soon. Hmm. I thought I saw something. <gasps> A sewer never looked so appealing. If this sewer took me all the way home, maybe, but... Stop! In the name of the law! I'll fu I don't like this level. Home sweet home. He's lying. We're across the street with a convenient vantage point to see that the cops are now inside the apartment. Remember, men? His name is Garrett. Consider him armed and dangerous. The Let's sheriff wants him brought was. in, dead or alive. Hey, What's the there? sheriff want with a common thief? The fuck did you just call me? I've pillaged ancient temples. I've worked for ghosts. I've robbed ghosts. Gods! Truett says this man is very dangerous and clever. Just follow your orders. Time to enter through the back on what I assume is a wooden fire escape. I guess they didn't have anything more flammable to use. <sighs> Something there? Crap! No! Oh, you can't hide forever. Things Looks like know. I'm gonna need a new address. But Look I'm gonna here. have to get to my stash first. No, nobody's here. Nothing but darkness or rats or something. Pay no attention to the man with the blackjack. <gasps> Garrett pays eight fifty a month for this place and doesn't even have any chairs. His stash is impressive enough, though I don't think I'm gonna get to use any fire arrows because of the whole no-killing thing. Good. Now time to relocate. With this key, I'll open an old gate to Shale Bridge. Because nothing bad has ever happened in Shale Bridge. Mm, strange. I thought there was something there. Really? <laughs> Jesus, these guys are dumb. Hey. <laughs> oh god, they're evolving. You're going down, thief. Back up! Ah! 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 
Ah, shit, is he... Yeah, he's dead. This mission is kind of boring. Let's escape to Shale Bridge and regroup. Something interesting's bound to happen. By order of the Council of the Keepers, you must come with us. Oh, it's the Keepers again. So much for this getting interesting. Logic dictates... Leave. But we must... Now! Has your wealth of knowledge grown so vast that you've lost all hunger for more? Yeah. My hand is copper. My brow is lead. Suffer me in a red patina swept along in a molten flow to a sad eternity. My tears are become drops of silver that shatter the crystalline fern. I plead the wind to sweep us away. Nice poem. You respect these cutscenes, Garrett. They're amazing. Not poetry. Prophecy. Oh, so fuck that then. Continue. The Metal Age is upon us. I picked the gilded apple from the iron tree. Iron trees? Not in my part of town. Find the humor if you must. But can you tell me truly, Garrett, are there any trees in your part of town? I will answer for you. There are not. Tell you what. You keepers can plant a few shrubs about town and I'll take care of me. I'll find my own way home. One more moment, if you will, Garrett. You have trouble, my friend. Danger from someone who hired Truart to kill you. Yes? Keeper Artemis has some info about Truart, who's having a meeting with his employer at the Mechanist Seminary, previously a Hammerite seminary. The meeting will most likely take place in some sort of conference hall. Heh. <laughs> There's no guarantee that I'll even be able to get inside, but all I need to do is get close enough to listen at the door. This situation does have one advantage. Things can't get any worse. Who could hire someone like the sheriff to kill me? In true thief fashion, the plot of the game starts somewhere around the fourth or fifth hour, and the game just foreshadows it in the first few missions. That stuff about there being no trees was referenced a little earlier in the warehouse mission. I used to grow my own spice, as well as fruits and vegetables, but all my crops died months ago and won't grow back no matter what I try. It's as if all the plant life in the city up and died. This mission is pretty easy if you've played it before. If not, you get to meet the Builder's children. But I wish the children of Karis were more... Uh, mild too. Thought not the first to be afeard of them. Though their visage is wrought to strike terror into the enemies of Karas. Or those who might consider becoming enemies. Don't be afraid of them, they're dorks, big metal nerds, steampunk robots. You'll be seeing them a lot going forward. Aside from shooting Acme bombs at you, they have a couple of major design flaws. One, they're steam operated, so if you shoot water arrows into their boiler, they go down. Two, they're also weak to explosives. Three, they shoot explosives at you that bounce off walls, so they can destroy themselves fairly easily. Four, with enough dedication, you can blackjack them. But I don't recommend it. The first option is usually the quickest and quietest. The mechanists, though, they're basically hammerites who learn to code. They use a mace instead of a hammer and they worship Karis more than they worship the Builder, because this is a cult. Karis did build this cool mechanical eye for you, which is really helpful for zooming in on people talking, which is entirely for the viewer's benefit. I didn't get any grave robbing done in the last mission, but there's crypts down here that'll get me into the seminary basement. Sounds spooky, though. Let's toss a scouting orb down. Yeah, of course it's haunted. Check it out, we can actually see Garrett's model in this game. I've got a better view in the next mission. 
I don't have any holy water or flash bombs, so I can't clean house. I've got to avoid them until I can get into the main building. The meeting between Truert and Karis is happening at midnight, but don't worry. Whenever you approach the door to the conference room is midnight. This is one of the tramps I delivered to you? Wait, what? The transformation is spectacular. And neither want nor worry has he. Oh, we stepped in something weird here. It's not that the money's not right, no. It's just that I need to be convinced you've taken the proper precautions. Trust thee in me, for tis the Builder himself who guides me. I'm glad your Builder guides you, but it would make me feel even more confident if you were to let me in on your whole scheme. Hell yes, yeah, Sheriff Truitt, getting the villain to explain his whole plan in the first act. Show me what's so special about your new servants. Ah, uh, it is impossible to hide anything from you, good Sheriff. Oh shit, abort, abort! He's playing you, Truitt, get out of there! I must ask thee to step away from the masked servant, that's right. Oh, the, uh, masked servants. Strange. I wonder what kind of work the mechanists do here. I can answer that. They have Truer kidnap vagrants and prostitutes and turn them into these. <laughs> here I was thinking I should hate Truer for trying to kill me, but yeah, this seems worse. Come, come, gentle beggar. And stand be just there. Oh god, what have I gotten myself into? I don't like this. My word! The mask emits a red vapor! He's created vape robots! Continue thy observations, Truett. Yeah, Truett, I can't tell what's happening unless you're narrating, because the designers didn't have the budget for this. They needed to give it to my buddy Superfly. But it consumes them! We are in peril! Fear me not, Stag Sheriff, for we are safe at this distance. See, already the reaction ceases. They are gone! And what remains in their stead? Sand? No. Rust. Indeed, tis very much like rust and harmless once settled. A weapon, then! Quite fantastic and monstrous. Of course, you'll keep these servants you're making away from me and my men. Of course, Truer. This clearly deranged mad scientist cult leader who developed a chemical weapon capable of turning entire human bodies into dust in about 10 seconds can be trusted and all the money he's paying you will be very useful when everyone is dead. Then we are in agreement. You need subjects for your servant project and I can supply them. Vagabonds, street scum, prostitutes. It's fucking incredible that Truer isn't the worst person in this room. For your part, you'll remember to keep our transactions absolutely secret. About that, you remember in the last episode when we picked up that wax cylinder that had recorded audio on it? Behold my wax cylinder machine. I've used it to capture the sheriff's very words even as they moved through the air. And I can supply them. Vagabonds, street scum, prostitutes. Good old-fashioned blackmail. Karis is gonna store the recording in a safety deposit box at the bank, which I have to steal a key for, which is right downstairs. I make a wax mold of the key, steal a bunch of loot, and leave the seminary. But... Fuck the mechanist. Fuck Karis. He's a weird genocidal piece of shit. So I knock out every guard in the building. I know it doesn't seem like much compared to the chemical warfare, so let's spice things up a little. The mechanists lock the catacombs because there's a couple of hammer haunts down there. Since hammer haunts aren't the homeless or prostitutes, the mechanists have a little bit of trouble dealing with them. Hey look, a heretic is robbing your dead brothers of their useless gold hammers! I hope no undead religious zealots notice me here. I didn't kill anyone, but these two are 100% gonna kill some of these mechanists if and when they wake up from their head trauma naps. Swear to God, as soon as I led them out of the catacombs and lost them by climbing a ladder, they both went straight to the workshop and started trying to wreck the mechanist shit. Look how much fun they're having. My work here is done. That recording should let me exert a little pressure on Truett to find out who hired him to kill me. It didn't take much to learn that the mechanists do all their banking with First City Bank and Trust. 
one of the wealthiest establishments in town. The recording is in a safety deposit box in their vault, but breaking into a bank presents some unique problems. A mansion has the best security a rich man can buy. A bank has the best security a lot of rich men can buy. Carrots wormed his way in by promising them endless profits and a cheap mechanized workforce to replace all the stupid drunk bennies who suck. And I'd take that deal too. The bank is extremely secure and full of traps and difficult stealth. Noisy floors and electric lights. Security cameras everywhere. My first stop is the roof, which will show you just how massive this level is. A lot of the outer doors are locks I can't pick, but this balcony entrance isn't. There's no loot goal here, so just pick up everything you can. Some people in this city are too rich for their own good. Lucky they have me to give them a hand. This level's also pretty brightly lit, meaning Katie doesn't have to find some way in editing to brighten things up without abusing the gamma slider and making the game look like trash. Or more like trash. Easy enough to get into the records hall and find out which safety deposit box the recording is in. The rest of it, though? To avoid the touch plate, you have to walk on the edge of the bridge, which isn't wood, but metal. Which is a really nasty and pernicious design that only a person designing a thief game would come up with. This level was designed by a man named Randy Smith, yes, a Randy, who was also responsible for the Haunted Cathedral in the previous game. All of these great levels, sure, but damn, man, give me a friggin' break. There's a room with a staircase that can easily take you to each floor, except the basement, We'll get to the basement. And since most of the surfaces in this map are made of tile, marble, those little snapper things that blow up when you toss them at the ground, really the most expensive and ridiculous material. Is that you? He heard one footstep from the second floor over all this loud machinery. Come on, coward. Face me like a man. Nothing, I guess. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You son of a bitch! Mm -hmm. Who goes there? There! Ah! Oh. It takes all of my willpower to not throw him into this pool and let him drown. There's only one guy guarding the switch that'll deactivate the cameras in the lobby, which is a nice break. Thanks, Randy. There are no guards in the basement whatsoever because it is absolutely stuffed to capacity with robots. To the point where if you deactivate them in the wrong narrow hallway, you'll be trapped. The little robots don't hurt you. They run away and alert the big robots to your presence most of the time. Oh boy, time for some immersive sim shit. The beta big daddy over here launches his cartoon acme bomb, which shows that they're smart enough to lead their targets. Being hit with a cartoon bomb, seriously, why is it a cartoon bomb? Anyway, the bomb itself doesn't kill me. The bomb bouncing off me and hitting one of the mines I dropped earlier that I was careful to avoid, that kills me. These robots might be big nerd cans, but rounding a corner into this scared the piss out of me. I brought a lot of fire arrows, water arrows, and mines into this level, and found some more mines later inside of the guard station. And it still wasn't enough to take care of even half the robots. So I'm forced to stealth by them and the cameras to get into a room where I can unlock the vault. No problem. Getting to the vault absolutely sucks. I rope arrow over this gap because I can't sneak by the guard on the other side. He will never, ever turn around. If I fall, there's one combat robot and two guards down there waiting for me. 
The vault itself has a camera outside. There's a closet that's locked with a key I've already stolen off the guards where I can deactivate it. There are two more cameras in the vault that you have to sneak by at the right time. Because it can't be easy, the safety deposit box I need to get into is on the top floor. Now that I've got everything I need, I could sneak out over the roof again, or on one of the balconies, or through a window in the basement, but I'm feeling dickish today. So I'm gonna walk right out the front door of a bank where I haven't even begun to knock out all the guards because of how difficult that would be. Later, suckers!